It's a lovely building, isn't it? Take a moment to look around. Take in what you see. So often when you walk in here, your eye is drawn towards the books, the shelves, the brightly colored displays, the words, the resources which the staff work hard to make sure your eye is drawn to. Look past that and it's the shell of a building. I like looking up, up towards the ceiling where there are no books spoiling the view. Oops, did I really say that out loud? I've got an appreciation for architecture. This is not a crime, library lovers. I also appreciate curves and everything is so straight in libraries. Books are straight. Librarians are, by their very nature, straight. Unless they're not straight. But also, crucially keen to ensure that books are displayed straight. Either with the front cover proudly showing off its cover to entice you, or the space-saving spine, which is hard work to view at a glance. I've observed that a high majority of people who visit this building view books with their heads cocked to the side <laughs> and walk in a weird crab-like sidewalk <laughs> up and down rows and rows of books. Searching. If there were less straight lines and more curves, then it would be easier to find things. I'd go as far as to say that I'd strongly urge any library designers out there to remember that straight lines need a curve in order to not bore the eye senseless. And to remember that we libraries have memories. We store them inside, like the books that adorn our shelves. The people who walk in my door, my mischievous staff, and the things that I watch and listen to every single day. I want to tell you about my favourite pastime. Otherwise a library would be, well, not boring, because that's an unfair thing to say. Just about what's in it. Books, magazines and stuff. Is free Wi-Fi? Warmth, comfy seats and a coffee machine, stuff. Take away the important bit and it's a building with stuff. Add the people and life becomes interesting. It becomes a library. Me. I keep a little note of the main things that happen during the week. Let me see. Day one. The observant one noticed that the new scientist display was lacking. They sent an email. There's a few emails in here, but they never email me. You. If they had emailed me, they'd have found out that I knew where they were. Those pesky magazine thieves hiding in the vestry? No. It's another kind of thief. A new kind like the scientists they read about. In fact, they don't disappear. That's a scientific fact. I googled it to make sure. Day two. 
The phone rings and the young one grabs the phone eagerly. She smiles as she politely tells the person the number for the police is 999. <laughs> She then heads upstairs, passing the friendly elderly couple at the large print section who aren't really there. Oh, there they are! Oh, I never wave or anything because you can't see them, so there's no point. Uh, the young one, yes, back to the young one. She saw the guy earlier, so knew she'd have to remove the Mills and Boone historical romance that has yet again been tucked away in the sci-fi section. <laughs> Why are your genres so dictated by gender? Day three. A gentleman of the handsome variety had been in. This single lady used library initiative to establish if the man she'd taken an instant like to was living with someone already. This wasn't stalking, just simply a check to see if it was worth having a go. You know, in a, hey, I like you, so I checked out if you're in fact single and discovered you were, so I'm basically sticking my neck out on the line here and asking you out. Ah, tragedy. It was not to be. She was rewarded for her efforts by discovering a different kind of bookmark in a returned book. A strip of leg wax <laughs> with hair attached. <laughs> the hair was long and lots of it. Her best day at work ever. Day four. The sister of the Macbeth witches was in today. <laughs> I hope one day she'll make her daughters read the actual play so they can understand that their aunts were simply arty and clever rather than witches. True story. Then, after one of my Twitter followers dropped off a very soggy return that had spent some quality time in a bath, we were visited by our friend from New Zealand. They shared a story of when they were studying for their PhD back home and how they'd started the rumor that the alarms on the doors in libraries, which were there to detect stolen books, could in fact make men sterile. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still unclear though. Is that for real? If it is, we might need a warning sign informing men to not stop for the beep. <laughs> I should send an email to someone to seek clarity. I'd hate to think that was a barrier to men walking through these doors. No, I know that's not the case. <sighs> Calm down, breathe. It's there for stolen books and who would steal a book from here? Uh, actually, I'm not going there. Day five. <laughs> a lady pondered for a long time at the cookery section. She often did, looking at different recipes and wondering at what she'd never cook for her husband, who was the ultimate lover of all things plain. She wanted to stretch her culinary experiences. She wanted something amazing to dazzle her taste buds. She was looking at a recipe for ostrich stew. <laughs> Tastes like chicken, she wrote. She ran to the desk, nearly knocking over the guy who comes in every day to read the paper. She was back the next day. 
book set gently on the desk and a straight turn around and back out the door. I knew this was the one he nearly found her out on. Her description of chicken did not cut it with the man who had the most upset stomach after eating it. Like we're talking about hold on tight on the pan. <laughs> upset stomach here. <laughs> she never confessed her sin or made it again. That of course was only because the butcher that sold the exotic meats she craved had closed down. She'd return to the cookery section, but never to take a book out. Just to sit and wonder at the joys she could expose her taste buds to if only... Oh, if only... Day six. One of our housebound customers phoned to complain to one of the young ones today. She may well be 86, but send her the wrong romance novels and she'll tell you that she'd prefer to just go out and get it for herself. The caretaker, meanwhile, jangled his keys at that news before patrolling the mezzanine. Nobody could see him, but they could hear his footsteps. The younger generation were hanging out. One of them scribbled, I love Sean Mendes on the toilet wall. Oh, the youth of today. No taste. <laughs> Day seven. <sighs> A tired visitor stood nervously fiddling at the desk. Their voice was soft, almost a whisper. I like to read Georgia Eyre when I'm tired, and I'm tired. The smiliest of the smiley assistants said no problem and escorted the tired visitor to the selection of I'm tired hair novels. She got them a seat so they could rest their weary legs. An elderly lady then dropped off a book before going to browse. The young one noticed the lady had another book out which was overdue and politely pointed this out. The elderly lady said, I don't like you. <laughs> you can't please them all, young one. Then the uneventful week came to an end when the friendly American appeared with her keys. She looked through me and said, Good night, library. She switched off my lights and locked my door. Just to annoy her, I switched them back on again a few times before she could actually go. <laughs> you have to have fun. People watching gets boring after a while. Good night, library. <laughs> <laughs>